welcome back to this episode of Gabe's Cave. That's Gabe. Hi. And I'm Uncle Nasty, and I've had it up to here. And we've got a cool topic to talk about today, huh? Yeah. Super cool. Gabe's super excited, if y'all can't tell. But before yeah. we jump into this, let's take a minute and thank our sponsor, RPGHiring.com. topic today is magic the gathering more more in the fact that they are combining with lord of the rings Mm -hmm. to bring us a new set of magic the gathering cards Mm -hmm. this set has it has brought some uh some steam with it Mm -hmm. and 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 why is that gabe they changed the beloved characters so they're not staying true to the character base is that right correct well what about this one of one card they're either going to completely ruin their shares and stocks and the entire TCG market for magic or before uh, we get to that, just tell them what that card is. Cause I'm sure they don't even know. Okay. What so is. they're coming out with a one ring card based on the one ring to rule them all. It's in Elvish in Tolkien's Elvish. And the whole point of it is there's literally only one printing of this card. Not like there's multiple of this card. No, there's one, the entirety of the world. We'll show offered you only of in English or only in Elvish. If the Elvish print of it is only printed once, and it is one of that card out there, one of one. What, and are, the, what are the chances of finding that card, Gabe? Uh, it's, you're four times more likely to win the Powerball. So it's not a very limited set. Yeah. It's just a limited card. Yeah. They do have serialized numbered soul rings mm-hmm. that, are, that are going. I, I feel like if this is going to have a chase card in it, people need to be chasing... And be happy about getting one of the serialized yeah, soul yeah, rings yeah. and not. Whoo! So let's talk about the prices on this set, Gabe. What are the prices like? They're priced like a limited set. They're they're priced so you have your regular set that a regular box of your basic cards is about uh, 125 U.S. dollars. Your typical sets like Forex. That is, that's MSRP, and then you have a master's set or a. Um, uh, a masters, a modern or commander set, and MSRP is somewhere around two to two fifty to three twenty five US dollars, three hundred twenty five US dollars for a single standard box. Then you have like those are considered limited sets, and because this has a secondary name brand on this and a secondary trademark on this set, we're having instead of a truly limited set uh distributors are labeling it as re- as uh, as a limited set however it's not that it's limited there's just a lot of uh demand there's more demand for this because of the name the secondary uh copyright slapped on this so because you have a limited set with more demand from distributor or a, a, unlim, a non, non-limited set that with more dis- demand from distributors, then they're considering it a limited set, even though it's got the same printing as normal sets. And then on top of that, your prices are the prices of a limited set. So you're getting the same amount of product as normal, and it's overpriced as crap because you have exclusive cards and then there's also cards that are based on your characters that you love you grew up with you grew up in red or you may have watched the movies and you love these characters and they slapped politics into it social policies their own beliefs and ideologies onto these characters um and because of this people are upset not to mention there's this one ring card and at the moment well let's talk about the one ring real quick at least it, i heard there was a bounty like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars oh yeah right was, but at least you can still go to your local card shop or whatever and spend five dollars on a set booster pack and you can get that card right no 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 it's only in a special shiny pack oh huh. that's 
uh, instead of let's say five to five to eight dollars, it's twenty five to forty for a single pack. Oh, so in the collector booster packs only, then correct. Ah, so you have to buy the four hundred dollar collector booster bundle box, correct? Or you have to buy the special gift bundle that only has the one pack. Hmm. And then on top of that. These are not only sold at local comic shops or game shops, so LGSs and stuff like that. It's also sold at big retail or custom ordered from certain streamers, uh, social media influencers, stuff like that. So let's say right now Wizards has, Wizards with Hasbro, them paired together, have flooded the market with really high dollar cards that are old cards but they reprinted them so that everybody can play magic magic is for everybody that's fine that's fine if everybody wants to play magic but no we actually encourage everyone absolutely to play. Yes. absolutely we, we, listen we like magic me and gay both play magic however when you take a card that used to be worth 500 and then you reprint it that $500 card that you've invested your time and money into is now 50 You've lost $450 because they decided to reprint it. So what they do is now that they have this single card out there, if the hunt for this card continues after release, someone doesn't immediately find it. Let's, well, let's talk about that real quick before you go on into that. What we we basically only have two. There there's there's three. I guess you could say the other whatever that be. But we really only have two options that are going to go on here with with this market. And coming from a a person, a people that sell this product in a physical store, it it could be good, but it could also be very very bad because the price for people like us to be able to buy this product it is not it's it's higher for us as well. So it's not like your your people your local game shops or your walmart or your targets it's not like we are marking it up another 150 dollars. that's mm. not how it works it's cost us more the profit margin for us is actually less on these sets if you look at it based off of how much they cost we still make about the same dollar amount we don't make any more money off of these limited sets so what does that do to us the 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 hope is is that you know people are chasing these serialized numbered cards the people are chasing this one ring so our two options are is the first one which would be good for us would be this set comes out these everybody orders their collector booster boxes we've got our cases in and weeks have gone by and no one has found the card yet. Mm -hmm. That's best case scenario for everyone that sells this product because that means that people will continue to try to mm -hmm. find the product, to find that card. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying that we ourselves would raise the price. Other stores will. We tend to not do that. We don't like price gouging our players. However, let's say we still have some. And it's been maybe two weeks, this bounty goes up, and then people go and they're like, hey, I want I want to try and find this card. I'm going to raise this bounty. And then more people try and find it. They put more money down on it. Those boosters, there's more of a demand for the limited supply now because it's out of print. That price on the market online rises making wizards and their stocks rise making the tcg market for magic rise or, it will pull them out of the hole or but they're tying it to a very weak branch if a <laughs> streamer they're tying their rope to a weak or anybody branch. for that matter well, but especially a streamer here's the thing if somebody finds that card says they found it sells it the want for these packs is gone Nobody cares about it. The four hundred dollars want is gone. It's gone. Nobody wants them anymore. They're useless. They're worthless. They're not worth the price anymore. So then somebody is like, "Well, I don't want these anymore," and nobody can sell them. Nobody can even. They can't give them away because nobody wants them. So then what happens is, let's say a streamer finds it. They're their prices, their their shares, their market shares are gone. Nobody uh, wants them. Immediately, it's going to be assumed like a, it's going to be a conspiracy theory within the community that 
if any of these it was planted, yeah, it, that it was planted and that they knew where it was going to go this whole time. It's a it's a very 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 slippery slope. Now let's say the the probably one of the easiest ways to to I'd say I don't want to say cook the books but like to make this where it is an insane profit and pulls them out of the hole to tie it to their strongest branch send it to a big retail store mark the package send it to a big retail store and big retails if they don't sell the cards they crush them let's just say it's in the mm-hmm. bottom of some barrel Walmart box, whatever. for sure Walmart and Target crush cards they That's will th- yes it is they will then they mark it and they just have them crush it or some high up executive keeps it whatever they have the card they never announce it years down the line it's either hidden by some executive or something like that or it's crushed and gone these packs will still be worth all this money it will still have pulled them out of the hole they dug themselves into so it is either going to be the biggest gamble and make them the absolute most money and pull them out of the hole they put themselves in or this is going to be the absolute worst thing for them they will never make money again and wizards will lose every bit of profit off of magic it's it, <clears throat> if, if someone finds this card early in like week one it is going to be devastating to a lot of businesses Correct. because smaller local game shops that don't have you know an online presence to sell their stuff online they they you know they're basically only focusing on their local market if they over order this set because you know it is this niche this uh, this new thing that they've got going on if they over order on this set okay let's say they normally order two cases and let's say they order 10 because it's something special and this this card is found week one people are not still going to be willing to go buy two and three boxes of these i could see Correct. still the, the 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 strongest most loyal and faithful magic players that aren't even that don't even care about it being tonight to lord of the rings that are going to go out and they're going to buy the newest set and the newest product because that's what they've done for years um those guys will probably still go buy their box but those aren't the people that they're marketing to with this they are marketing to a new group which is Lord of the Rings fans. They're trying to reach out to people that aren't already familiar with magic. They're trying to get new players and they're using these, uh, these, um, these tie-ins, these collaborations, like they, they, in case you guys are not familiar, if y'all are watching this and y'all aren't familiar with what magic, the gathering and what Hasbro and wizard of the coast that they've been doing here lately, they teamed up with uh, Warhammer 40 K and they had a Warhammer a collaboration set that came out and they were very limited though mm-hmm. they were extremely the co- the limited. the collectors the foil the pretty cards were extremely limited. yes they were and those are the only ones that are still worth money the regular ones unless it is a sealed completely sealed deck like perfectly sealed untouched undamaged no corner dent no edge even like you can't find fingerprints on this stuff if it is sealed it's worth money otherwise it is worthless so it's a concern it it like them trying something new we're we're all for it essentially except for the fact that we've kind of talked about this same line and we're not to sound like haters but we kind of talked about this during the victoria alonzo and the state of the mcu deal we are pop culture people we are not where i'm not the person that goes to support something because of whatever whatever reason they are talking about on interviews or behind closed doors. That's it's the actual content. Mm-hmm. Um, so being a fan of Lord of the Rings, that that being that and Harry Potter and my family is is like a real like a real big deal. You know, mm-hmm. everybody grew up loving Harry Potter and Absolutely. Lord of the Rings in my family. So mm-hmm. for them to take it upon themselves because they were given uh, creative freedom in to, such a way that to change main characters mm-hmm. uh, it it feels wrong it feels icky and not 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 because of, not because of what it was changed to but solely for the fact that they changed the source inform they took the source information and twisted it to fit their own their own political beliefs and thoughts and and then put it out there for everyone to see. And they're like, 
I want this to be this. It, you know, and the just because poor they talk and they talk about him, you know, the the people that you know they encouraged this change and that I liked it. You know, they talk about Tolkien like he was like a bad guy. And like that, the, the reason they had to make these changes because he was a bad guy. He wasn't a bad guy, and he gave us characters and he gave us a fantasy world that that h- hundreds of millions of people have loved. And and it 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 doesn't make sense. A lot a lot of things that they do like that don't make sense, but it happens. But the main the main focus of this of this talk on the of the Lord of the Rings deal is that. It is a collaboration. They had creative. They had creative freedom. They made some changes that we don't necessarily agree with, but only because it didn't stay true to the characters that we know and love. So, if we were outside, and that's another thing, is that from a business standpoint, <coughs> they spend all this money and they do this collaboration, and they are trying to uh, reach out to Lord of the Rings fans. Guys, <coughs> got Gabe's Cave Comics cards collectibles. Gabe's Cave dot com. Um, we will have these available if it's something that you want to look into. Absolutely. Um, it will be um, a fun set. There's not really any super aggressive competitive cards in there. So if CDH is your thing, I'm not, this isn't, you know, Commander Masters coming out later, Commander Legends. That's That would be your set that you want to spend money on this year. But if you are a Lord of the Rings fan and you like to have um, things that tie into that, no matter where it goes, we will have those available. Now, mm-hmm. one thing I, I want to talk to, because I know not everybody out there has ever even played Magic the Gathering, and because this is a Saturday's episode, we are going to treat you guys with something, and it is uh, one person, one lucky winner, is going to win these four packs of Phyrexia I will be one Jumpstart Boosters. Gabe, tell them what they can do with these four packs. Pretty much all you have to do. You take two packs and you give two packs to your friend. And what you'll do is you'll open the packs, take the cards, you'll shuffle them up. It includes everything you need to know how to play. Um, If anything else, you can look up tutorials on YouTube. But you know what? These will allow you and a friend to start playing Magic and also to just have fun with it. It's very simple and it's very easy. It's all you have to have. And despite all that other stuff, Magic the Gathering still remains one of the best ways for you and a buddy or you and a group of friends to sit down in person, mm-hmm. have some human interaction, and enjoy a tabletop game. Correct. It is still a blast. Mm-hmm. Despite high prices and on this on this Lord of the Rings set, which we... Despite thoughts of the, the creators and everything else. Right. It is still a very fun game. Uh, so, yeah, guys... We really hope that you uh, enjoyed this little episode, us talking about the Lord of the Rings set and us explaining the whole hoopla with the One Ring. Um, We hope that it works out in the retailer's benefits, and I say that because we are in that business, and I hope to God that people don't lose a fortune uh, buying into this, only to not be able to sell it uh, later on. So we really wish you guys luck if you guys are out there watching this. Uh, real quick, let us let me tell you about some places that we got. We're going uh, June 24th and the 25th. We'll be in Oklahoma City at the uh, Pop Culture Convention. And then uh, we'll be back in Oklahoma City August 5th and the 6th for a horror con. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I look forward to the most every year is Cowtown Comic Con, September 30th through October 1st. That's yes, where sir. normally all of our buddies are at, all the artists that we hang out with and talk to the most yes sir uh so yeah one thing that's going to be popping off today although you will not be seeing this until uh a couple days after we record this but going live tonight we are going to be doing the gabe's cave uh adventures of gabe cave the kickstarter correct so you guys when you see this it will be available on kickstarter when this goes live so you can go to the kickstarter the link will be put in the description make it easy for you guys to find yeah what about these two videos a week guys yeah great content gabe glad to have you back on the show dude it's been been a little while it's gabe's cave dog all right bye